Hi everyone, welcome back to the Book Vandal Shop. I'm really excited to be back today. I have a, a new tutorial for you. Um, we're going to make this little uh, journal book. Um, I haven't seen anything like it, but that doesn't mean it's not out there. So, you know, if somebody else makes something like this, you might tag them below because um, I'd love to take a look um, at that. So, uh, I'm going to flip through this real quick before we get started so you get an idea of what we're going to make um, before we just jump right in. So here on the cover, get this open, here on the cover we just have some layering, although I think when I make this again, this is just my prototype, I think I'm going to turn this into a pocket so I can have um, things tucked in there. And then I do have some 3D embellishments. Now you may have already noticed this is cardboard, corrugated cardboard that I've created this out of. Um, and that's something probably a lot of us have right now with all the buying online we've been doing. Um, so I'm sure a lot of us have a bunch of Amazon boxes um, lying around the house. So um, we have little pockets here and journaling cards so you can journal on the back of them. Now I used pre-made uh, journaling cards and uh, tags and tickets just to make it go by a little uh, quicker to make. Okay, so then this flips on out and I may have to zoom us out. Okay, so on this side I have another um, pocket and these pull out and they're blank on the back. Okay, and then here in the center I have another tag. Kind of tucks back in there. Okay, and then this is going to flip down. Whoop, I may have to keep zooming us out. Okay, so that flips down. And then we have a spot to journal here with flowers. And then this is going to flip up. And then we just have a little bit of layering decoration here on the back. And then here I'm going to zoom us down carefully. Okay. And here on this panel, that's what I'm going to call each of these as a panel rather than a page. We have a little journal book that's been glued on on the back. So inside of this there is um, 10 sheets of paper put together so it would be 40 sides to journal on plus the two inside covers that you could you could definitely embellish or put pockets in or use them for writing and then that ties on up. And then this top panel up here again same thing another 40 page or 40 side journaling book here. Okay so that um, that is that, and then let me show you the back real quick. Sounds like the UPS guy is pulling up in my driveway right now as I speak. Delivering me another Amazon box, I'm sure. Okay, and then here on the back is another pocket and card back here. Okay? All right, so that is what we're going to create. So let's talk about the things you're going to need. Let me zoom us out just a hair. You're going to need uh, five pieces of some kind of cardboard. Now I just happen to have cardboard that, and it's corrugated, but it's it's only has paper on one side and no paper on the other. Sorry, I apologize. My neighbor's dogs are outside and they apparently don't like the UPS man. Um, so they're barking. Um, so I have five of these and they're cut at six inches by six inches square. Now the reason that I chose that size is because most of us have a lot of um, 12 by 12 paper pads laying around um, that you might have a sheet here or there of it, but maybe it's not enough to do, you know, an entire project. So, you know, it, it doesn't take but a couple of sheets to do this project. So I chose a six by six size because um, you could essentially cover um, four panels of the five with just one sheet of 12 by 12 paper because you're going to tear it down. Um, you're not going to cover the entire surface okay because that's the whole part of making it look shabby is letting the cardboard show through so a 12 by 12 sheet of paper will cover up to four surfaces you know if if you're trying to just use up a couple of sheets all right so you're going to need some paper you're going to need like i said five pieces of cardboard um, if you are using cardboard that has paper on both sides you can just kind of peel it back and let it look you know ripped and frayed and grungy um, i have heard i think it was carrie from carrie gibson's art I think she said you could wetten it and it would peel off easier, so you could try that. Um, you're going to need some sari silk or ribbon. You're going to need some scrap lace or scrap fabrics if you want it to look shabby like that. Okay, Some glue, some little embellishments, and maybe some distress ink. Okay, And you could totally do this um, even with chipboard. It doesn't have to be with cardboard. You could do it with chipboard. 
Okay, all right, so we are gonna get started. Okay, so after you have cut out your five squares of cardboard at six inches by six inches, okay, then you're going to wanna to ink around the edges if you're going for that grungy look like I am. So I've already grungied up those four and I'll quickly, and I'm, and I'm not doing it perfectly, I'm just, just giving it a little bit of color here or there, just around the edges, because that's the only part that's gonna show. The center part is not gonna show. Okay, and hopefully I'm not jiggling the whole thing. So I am out in my camper again, doing videos out here, because uh, right now with quarantine and everybody being in the same house, and you've all seen my craft room, I have a video here on YouTube. I'm in the center of the house, so it's a little hard sometimes to get a little bit of quiet. Occasionally I go out to the family room, but still kind of hard. So I'm out here crafting in the camper, um, which is kind of fun because we sure can't go camping right now. <laughs> all right, so there are my five pieces of six by six cardboard and they're all inked up around the edges and ready to go. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get a layout of how we're gonna want these to go. So this is gonna be my front cover, okay? And then, let me open mine up here. Let me open it up so I can, so I can get an idea. Okay, and then I'm gonna zoom us out so you can see see it as a whole. Okay, so I think the way I did it last time, yeah, I had corrugated side up, and like I said, if you're not using um, cardboard like mine, it's not really going to matter. Yours is going to look the same on both sides. Okay, and the reason I chose to do it that way because of the type of cardboard I had. I have corrugated on one side and smooth paper on the other is I wanted my pieces down here and up there because that's where the journal's going. I wanted it to have the flat side so that the journal would glue nicely um, to a flatter surface. So that's how that's going to go. So the first hinge I'm going to put on is my front cover and this is essentially going to be my back cover because this is going to fold down, fold up, and then fold over okay so let's work on the first hinge here okay now for my prototype I was a little more snug than I wanted to be so I'm going to add just a little bit to it that way I can put in more three-dimensional uh, uh, elements if I want to so that first hinge I'm putting in um, I don't really have anything to to write on here is going to be an inch and a quarter okay one and one quarter inches is going to be my hinge size, okay? I'm gonna zoom us on down here so while we put the hinges in so you can see how I'm doing this. All right, so all I've done is I've taken some sorry silk pieces and I've cut them into strips that are about, oh, one, two, three, four, about four inches long maybe, okay? Which is a little, quite a bit longer than really what I need. So I'm just gonna have two of them. Okay, and they're just going to attach my front cover to my back cover. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do right now is go ahead and attach them to my front cover. So this is the side I want to show on my front. I like that grungy look to show on the outside. And I'm just going to glue, and I'm using Fabri-Tac. You use whatever glue you are comfortable with. Fabri-Tac just works great if you're using um, cloth materials and it also dries really quickly for um, filming purposes okay and it does soak through especially if you're using sari silk but that's going to be all covered up with paper so it really doesn't matter okay so all I'm doing right now is I'm just worrying about getting it attached okay all right now this works great if you have um, a board like I've got right here a cutting um, board but you could you could eyeball this, you, it doesn't have to be that exact, okay? But what I'm doing right now, because I do have this board, is I said I wanted to have an inch and a quarter gap, okay? So if I line, line it up on this line right here, and I lined this piece up on that line, I have an inch gap, okay? And that's what my other one had, but I'd like to go a tad bit bigger, okay? So I'm gonna slide, 
this out. And now I have an inch, one inch and a quarter on my sorry silk there. Okay. And I am just making a little mark like that. Okay. And that's going to show me where my, I'm going to glue my other. And I'm just going to trim this off just a hair. And I always hang on to these little pieces that I've cut off of sorry because they are great for embellishments. Okay, now on my other one, I have the corrugated side up. Now what I also do when I'm doing this is I flip flop the corrugated. I make sure it's a good mix of vertical and horizontal because that's going to add some stability um, to your book when it's all folded up. If all of your pieces all run this direction, when you pick up your book, it, it will be wavy like this or curvy or bendy, whatever you want to say. <laughs> okay, so I make sure I alternate some of my cardboard so that some of the cor corrugated runs horizontally and some of it runs vertically. All right, so I'm going to put some glue on my sari ribbon. And there may be an easier way to do this. If you find an easier way to do this, fabulous. This is just the easiest way I can that I can show you on camera. Okay, so I drew those lines on my sari silk to show me where I was going to glue this down. Okay. And I may need to do some adjusting. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back on my board and I can see how I want to do a little bit of adjusting to it. Oops, I'm almost out of frame. Okay. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't. Okay, so I have about a one and a quarter inch gap between both pieces of my cardboard. Okay, so that's the front and the back. Let me get the other pieces ready. Okay, on this side we had a one and a quarter inch uh, gap. And then on this side, we're going to have a one inch gap. We're basically working our way down um, a quarter of an inch at a time because as I fold it up, it's going to gain width. So this will be the last piece to fold. It needs to be the biggest. This will be the next last piece to fold. So it has to be the next smallest. Okay. So on this one, I will end up having a one inch gap. All right. One and a quarter on this one one inch gap on this one and you're going to attach this the same um, way as we did the other one however it's easiest for you it's just that we are gluing these on keeping in mind what our gap is okay i'm going to flip this over so it's easier for me to work with okay Notice on this one, I didn't, I didn't mark it. This time I just, I flipped it over just to show you, you know, you don't have to mark the ribbon and glue it. You can do it like this as well. However, it's easiest for you. No right or wrong way. I'm just being careful about watching my gap. If you don't have a um, cutting board like this one, you could um, mark out lines on a sheet of big paper. You could mark out where a, um, an inch gap would be so that would help you line it up it would be easier than trying to measure it um, with a ruler while you're gluing this on that would be a little tricky I think okay all right so before I get confused that's my one and a quarter gap that's my one inch gap so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna write on this one that this is my front cover and you probably can't see that, but I'm writing front cover. Actually, I'm writing back of front cover, okay? And over here, I'm writing right side, okay? The next ones that we have to do now is this piece down here. And I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'll put it that way, okay? And so this one is going to have, this was one and a quarter, one inch, so this one's going to be a three quarter inch gap. Okay, three quarter inch gap, three fourths. 
Okay, I'm going to glue it on the same way to the back of this one and to this side of this one at three quarters of an inch gap. And I'm going to do this one up here the same way, except for that one up there. I'm going to have a half inch gap, a half inch gap. Okay, one and a quarter, one inch, three quarter inch gap, and a half inch gap. Okay, I'm going to finish gluing these on and I'll come right back. Okay, I've got all my hinges glued on all four sides of the back. Okay, again, one more time. This was one and a quarter inch gap, a one inch gap, a three fourths inch gap, and a one half inch gap. Okay, so when it folds up, it's going to go the smallest one, the next smallest, or the next biggest, the next biggest, and then the largest one. Okay, and then it excuse me, and then it needs to tie. So I've got, it, well, it doesn't have to tie, mine's going to tie though. It helps kind of keep it all together stabilized. So that's what I'm gonna do now is put the ties on. So I need a tie to go on the back on this cover and then I'm gonna to wanna to tie back here. So let's go ahead and put my back one on first. I'll zoom you back down. We may have to do a lot of zooming in and out as this project is a little bit big. And we are probably not going to decorate every page on camera um, because, you know, that's going to be done to your own liking. But I, I will show you the basics of, of what I did. All right. There's my back closure tie. And then this one's going to go on the inside of the front cover. And my ties are about 16 inches. And that is totally up to you how much ribbon you want hanging out. Now, when you do your hinges and your ties, you don't have to use sari silk. That's just what I have. You could use ribbon or seam binding, um, scraps of fabric cut into strips, um, anything like that. I just would not use paper for these hinges um, because it won't last. They'll just get torn. So I, I really wouldn't um, use those. Okay, let's see. What do we want to decorate first or put together first? Um, I think what I'm going to do is show you how I did the notebook portion down here at the bottom. Now, if you remember, there's one on the bottom, and then there is also one up here on the top flap. Okay, and they are identical, so I'm only going to show you my process for doing that once. Okay, I had one down here and one up there on the, on the top panel. So let's go through how I did this one. And I'm just going to keep that right there close by where we can see it. Okay, so I got to find that on my project. Which one was that? Let's see, there's the right. Here's the bottom. Here it is down here. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is cover up the cardboard um, with a piece of paper that I like. Okay. And so I'm going to find a piece of paper that I like, and I'm going to tear it to size. I, I want to go for the grungy look, okay? I, I don't want the nice cut look. You do whatever you want to do, but I am going to rip a square of paper that I like, and I am going to ink it up. Um, and I'm also going to probably add some scrap lace and maybe some cheesecloth behind it a little bit.
Okay, so now I have the back covered. I need to find what I want to use for the cover of my little journal. Okay, I chose a solid blue as I'm going to add a little embellishing to the cover anyway. So what I want to do now is I'm going to kind of measure uh, how big of a piece that I want. So that should be sufficient for the front and back. And I'm just going to go ahead and fold my paper. And notice I didn't fold it in half. And I didn't fold it in half because I'm going to end up tearing off the edge. I want the rough edges for my book. And this way, I just have this one big section left over. Okay, and then I'm going to tear the top of my little booklet. I just want it to be nice and rough. You can cut this with your paper trimmer if you want to. And now I'm measuring for my height. Okay, so this is going to be the height of my little journal. Okay, I'm going to put it on here and see if I need to adjust it at all. I think I do want to adjust this corner down just a tad. Okay. That will do it. Okay, and then we're going to want to ink that up. And let's see. Then we're also going to want our papers for this. Now, my little booklets, I had 10, what I, what I said was 10 sheets of paper. Really, it was five sheets of 8.5 by 11 coffee dyed paper that I ripped in half, um, which created then my 10 sheets. I'll show you in just a second. Let me finish inking this up. Okay, ink up that side. And I don't need to do the back because the back is going to be glued down um, to my panel. Okay, and I think I want to just tone that whiteness down just a little bit. Okay, all right, so that will end up being glued down when I get to that. Okay, let me show you how I chose to do my pages for the book. I picked out five sheets of coffee dyed paper. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Folded them in half. Okay. And then I just tore them in half. Okay. Now I essentially have 10 sheets of paper for all my books, okay? And all you're going to want to do now, and I'm not going to go through all this on camera because I don't want this video to be forever long. <laughs> now what you want to do is you are going to want to tear these down to size, okay? So obviously they're a little big for my book. I need to go through and tear them to size, okay? And I'll be right back. Okay, so I have all of my papers torn to size and put inside my cover. Now, I forgot to bring any needle and thread out here in the camper with me, so I won't be um, sewing this right now. But the way I did my original one for the prototype is I just used a three-hole pamphlet stitch here, okay? So that's all you're going to do there. Or if you have a long-arm stapler, you should be able to reach that with a long-arm stapler, and you could just staple it if you wanted to. Okay, so on my prototype, if you remember, we had the journal and it was glued to the panel and then we had this twine to keep it closed. And that to me is kind of important because with this type of journal with the panels um, flip flopping, um, I don't want the journal flopping back and forth either, especially if you're going to paper clip anything into it. So what I did was I took my twine and uh, I don't really don't really want to glue this permanently right now because I, I haven't stitched my pages in but I'll just show you so I just took my twine and I measured around my journal first actually to see just how much twine I would need so I didn't want to use I didn't want to waste too much okay so I tied it and I'm like okay that works so then I cut my twine off okay to size and then after I I've done that, then I took my twine and I found the center of it 
and I laid it in the center of my panel. Okay. Then I took a scrap piece of paper that I didn't need anymore and I put a bunch of glue on it and I actually glued it right on top of my twine and what that does is help secure my twine just a little bit more even I mean, it's not necessary but it just helps keep it secure okay and then I glued the whole back of my cover of my journal right on top okay and after it's good and dry then you should be able to tie it up okay let's take a look at the embellishments that I did on the journal part I took a journal card that was in my paper pad and all I did was I um, cut out another sheet of cardstock the same size as this okay I put a piece of cheesecloth between the two okay so I had the the journal card a piece of plain cardstock and then I put the cheesecloth between the two of them and I sewed around the edges just to give it that look and then I was able to just glue it right on there um, totally not necessarily you don't have to do it that way you can embellish any way you want to but that's just an idea I also have some Tim Holtz ephemera in my stash and that's what I've used to decorate there okay so that's how you do the journal panel that's um, the one on the bottom and then to do the one up here on the top you do the exact same thing okay the exact same thing up here on the top okay all right now let's take a look at our panels the one in the back was purely for decoration um, I just didn't think I needed anything else back there now let me show you my side panels let me get this thing back into proper order here okay Here's my side panels. I'll lay it right on top of my other one here. Okay, side panel, side panel, and here's the back. Now, I chose to do pockets on the side panels. The reason for that, for me, was because um, I wanted it to have pockets, not just little journal books. Now, why didn't I put the pockets here instead of journals, here and here and up, up here? Okay, the reason for that is because with this being a little flip-flop book, when I fold this up, okay, and I fold it back down, if I had made this a pocket instead of a journal, I'd be dumping stuff out of my pocket every time I flip it up. So that's what made me choose to do pockets on the sides because I'm not going to dump anything when I'm doing this, okay? So journals on the top and bottom so nothing gets dumped out of pockets. And pockets on the side you could feasibly do four of these journals you could do one on each panel and no pockets okay or you could do one on each of these panels and put a pocket on here and a pocket on the back okay totally totally up to you all right okay um so same thing here you're just gonna tear up some paper and glue it down I took my scraps that's what I chose to make my pockets out of with scrap papers okay um, I layered them up with uh, just little Tim Holtz embellishments and scrap lace okay easy peasy all right so I think that's it I'll run through it one more time just to make sure we have it here's the back like I said my back was purely for decoration I had a pocket here and here so nothing gets dumped I had a notebook down here and a notebook up at the top your top flap is going to fold down first it has the smallest hinge this one folds up next okay again if you put pockets here you have to watch it because things will dump as you do that so okay and there we go and then decorate up the cover any way you like okay I did mine with lots of, of uh, layers I'll show it to you one more time here Okay, so I had lots of embellishment and layers, and like I said, I think in this one, when I when I uh, finish decorating it up, I'm going to have pockets in the front to tuck my stuff in. All right, well, I'm going to let you go because uh, this video is already pretty long, so I'm not going to keep you any longer just gluing papers on. You all know how to do that, but I uh, just wanted you to see the bare bones of how this little book worked. And if you make one, please be sure to tag me on Instagram, Facebook, or right here on YouTube. You can say at the at sign and the book, book vandal shop, all one word. 
and uh, then I'll be able to see it. Or you can hashtag um, the book vandal shop, all one word on YouTube, and I should be able to see it that way as well. So I'd love to see your creations. Let me know if you make one. And uh, stay tuned. We'll have a feature Friday video next week um, since we're doing them weekly now. And so stay tuned for that. Happy crafting, everybody. Bye-bye.